Hello and welcome to Sounding Out the Word podcast, a ministry of Anchor Baptist Church in Salt Lake City, Utah. I'm your host, Pastor Jason Atwood, and it's good to have you on the broadcast with us this morning. We hope you've had a good week and we pray that today's podcast will be a blessing to you as we continue to look in the Word of God in the life of Joseph And we're in Genesis chapter number 40 today. And last week we saw, well, let's just read verse number one of chapter 40. The Bible says, and it came to pass after these things. Well, what's the things? Well, last week we saw that those things were the time when Joseph was falsely accused by Potiphar's wife. Joseph had been sold as a slave by his brothers. He had been bought by this uh, official named Potiphar in the Egyptian empire, Potiphar uh, had entrusted Joseph with many things uh, throughout his uh, household. In fact, the Bible tells us that Pharaoh didn't know of anything going on in the household uh, because he had entrusted it all in Joseph's hand. And we saw last week all that was brought about because Joseph lived a consistent Christian life. Uh, Potiphar lifted him up. Potiphar trusted him because of Joseph's walk with God. But we saw that all of that didn't mean that Joseph was going to have an, uh, an easy life. The Bible talks about in chapter number 39 that Potiphar's wife comes to him. And of course, we know the story how that she uh, tempts him to, to lie with her and commit, commit adultery and, and to, to sin in that awful way in the sight of God. And Joseph rejects her and Joseph lost his coat, but he, but he kept his character. The Bible tells us how that, of course, Potiphar's wife lies about Joseph In chapter number 40, in the end of chapter 39, we find Joseph in prison. Since normally, had a a slave been guilty of this accusation, Joseph normally would have been put to death. Uh, Many believe, as you you read and you study scriptures and you study uh, commentators about this, people believe that Potiphar's wife knew that his wife was to blame for this, and this wasn't maybe even the first time that she was involved in something like this. Oh, how we need God's help in our marriage. Oh, how we need God's help to to be faithful, to be right with God and and, and then right with one another. None none of us are are, are above uh, this type of sin in our life. God, help us to stay close to God, to to stay faithful in our marriages. But part part of Potiphar's anger in chapter 39, the Bible says in verse number 19, and it came to pass when his master had heard the words of his wife, which she spake unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant to me, that his wrath was kindled. So the Bible speaks that Potiphar was angered also by the the words of his wife. And again, I think that's partly why Joseph winds up in prison and not put to death. Either way, Joseph is now in prison in our text. And God, he's going to do it again. Once again, he blesses Joseph's consistent godly living. He's blessed so much that the Bible explains in chapter number 40 that the keeper of the prison gives Joseph some sort of, it, some sort of administrative position, and he, he was able to move about the prison more freely uh, than some, and he was able to, to serve others. Uh, in today's prison ser- prison prison's uh, terminology, I think he would be maybe the equivalent of some sort of a, a, a trustee or a, or a turnkey, but he was still a prisoner. Don't, don't forget that. Even though he was in a trusted position, even though he was able to have more freedom than other prisoners, he was still a prison. Don't forget that this is God working in the life of Joseph through providence for the purpose of putting Joseph in a position where God's people, who is that? The children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, could be spared and could strengthen to the size of a nation in a protected environment for 400 years. God placed Joseph in this position in Egypt for that reason, because there's going to come a time of a famine. There's going to come a time where where God's people, that that nation needed to be protected and fostered, and God was making a place. God was carving out a place in the land of Egypt for that to take place through these bad circumstances that happened in the life of Joseph. All, All this is happening to Joseph, the good and the bad. It's working together for God's purpose that he has. Now, in our thinking, Joseph's position has gotten and has gone from bad to worse. I mean, he's he's no longer under his father's loving eye. He's not just in a pit. He's not just sold as a slave. He's not just 
climbing up the ranks of a, of a, of a, of a faithful, godly servant. Joseph is now in a prison. But Joseph's character continues to shine above the circumstances. And Joseph is going to use this opportunity to point these people in prison closer to God. When, when you think about it, when Joseph could have, could have very well just shut down his testimony, he could have just shut down his influence for God, or he could have even taken all the credit for revealing these coming dreams uh, to himself. But I want us to see as we look in the Word of God in chapter number 40 today, this, this thought here. You don't need a pulpit for ministry. I've said this and I've preached this many different ways, but we need to get this understanding. We need to get this idea, this philosophy, this this thought, this biblical doctrine. If we are going to be a Christian, I didn't say if you were going to be saved. I said if you were going to be a Christian. And again, that's that thought that you don't need a pulpit for ministry. So many times people think, well, I'm, I'm not the pastor. I'm not the one that stands up on the platform behind the pulpit in front of people. I don't, I don't teach and I don't preach to people three and four times a week. I, I don't get invited to special meetings and big conferences and all these things. But the Bible makes it very clear that if you're saved, God wants you to be pointing and God wants me to be pointing and influencing people to him whenever and wherever you are. You know, today a lot of things happen in the name of ministry, but they don't qualify for ministry in a biblical sense. But God, but what God wants us to do does not require a pulpit. God wants us to help people, the saved and the lost, to be in a right relationship with him. You might run across someone who genuinely knows Christ as their Savior in your work or in your neighborhood or in your family, and they simply, although that they are saved, they are not in a right relationship. They're not in the right fellowship with God. They're not plugged into a local New Testament church. They're not serving God. They're not using their talents and their gifts and their abilities for God. God wants you to have a ministry to help those people. You're certainly going to run across those people that are lost, that do not know Christ as their Savior. They're trusting in religion. They're trusting in their good works. They're trusting in their family name. Maybe the, maybe God is not on their radar at all. Maybe, maybe they would be a, a self-proclaimed atheist. God still wants you to have a ministry to bring them into a right relationship with him, which would be primarily salvation. And if the results of that will be seen on Sundays... When we, when we love to see God's house full of God's people worshiping him. Listen, the ministering, the you and I bringing the saved and the lost into a right relationship with God, the ministering has to be done Monday through Saturday. That's when you don't have a pulpit. God has someone in your path that if you would open your eyes, they could be ministered to for his glory. You say, well, I'm, not a, I'm just not in a good place right now to be able to do that. Joseph was. Joseph wasn't in a good place. In fact, the fact of the matter is that there, there's never going to be a perfect situation to our liking where we will be in what the world would call a good place to be able to minister to someone else. I want you to see that ministry can happen wherever you are. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 40 and verse number 4, and the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them. Who's them? The other prisoners. And he served them, and they continue to season and award. That phrase right there is many times why people don't want to minister without a pulpit or with a pulpit. Because the Bible says, and Joseph served them. Do you realize part of ministering to people is not them serving you? Oh, it's, it's you serving them. It's me serving them. Jesus taught us that. The Bible says in verse number five, as we continue, and they dreamed a dream, both of them, each man his dream in one night, each man according to the interpretation of his dream, the butler and the baker and the king of Egypt, which were bound in the prison. And Joseph came in unto them in the morning and looked upon them and behold, they were very sad. Verse number seven, the Bible says, and he asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the ward of his Lord's house saying, wherefore look ye so sadly today? And they said unto him, we have dreamed a dream. And there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, notice this, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. And then verse number 19, as we skip all the way down there, the Bible says, Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thy head from off thee, and shall hang thee on a tree, and the birds shall eat thy flesh from off thee. 
You might be tempted to say, well, Joseph was able to be influential in their lives because he, he had a position. But wherever you are, however little influence you think you have, can, can I remind us as you listen, you are in a much better place. I am in a much better place than Joseph any day of the week. Where, wherever you are, whatever you're facing, Joseph was still in prison. I don't care what his position was. He was a prisoner. He was an inmate. He was incarcerated. But that's what I want us to see is that you don't have to have a pulpit to minister and ministry can happen wherever you are. Hey, you might be listening and you might be in a, in a, in a literal prison today. You realize that if you're saved, that God can use you to minister in that very dark place. God can use you to shine a light in that dark place. It's obvious that Joseph cared for these people that he came in contact with. He cared for them before they were in a place where they could serve him or do anything for him or benefit him in any way. Sometimes we really want to be buddies with someone and we, we sometimes really want to get close with someone when they can benefit us. Usually with most people, they will latch on to someone who's helping them. But if the, if the gravy train stops, they move on to someone and something else. But we read there in verse number six and seven that Joseph cared for them and he treated them like they were, they were human beings. He, he obviously cared, and, cared enough for them because he noticed that they were sad. He, he took time to note their, their outlook and their condition. They were comfortable sharing with Joseph what was going on. This wasn't the first time I think Joseph inquired about them and how they were doing. Most of the time, that's why as Christians, we never get to the place where, we, where we're really able to minister to other people because we're too focused on our problems. We, we, we never stop and, and care about someone else. Everyone has problems. Joseph had problems. But look at this. Joseph gave those problems to God and let the great physician, let him take care of those problems so that he could minister to someone else in need. Do you see how that works? The Bible says, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. It's only when we cast our care upon the Lord Jesus Christ and we are free from that unbearable burden, it is only then that we are able to finally actually minister and care for someone else because we've quit focusing on our own problems. The Bible tells us in verse number eight, when they tell him why they were so sad that they, that they had this dream that they couldn't interpret, they didn't know what it meant and it troubled them, Joseph takes the opportunity to point them to God. You know, as you listen today, ministering to people is not about clothing them. Ministering to people is not about buying them food. Ministering to people is not about befriending them and then maybe feeling sorry for them and what they're, what they're going through. Ministering to people is ultimately and fundamentally about pointing them to God. As we said at the very beginning of the podcast, it's about bringing people into a right relationship with God. Why? Because God is the one who can meet their needs. If they need clothing, God can work that out. God can bless. If they need food, God can work that out. God can bless. But until they know the Lord Jesus Christ and until they're into a right relationship with God, that needs to be the first priority. If you're helping someone, you can actually be hurting them if they need to be trusting God and if you aren't pointing them to God with your help. Sometimes we're, we're pointing people to ourselves instead of to God. And sometimes we create a dependence upon ourselves. Oh, why? We like that. That feels good to our pride. That feels good to our ego. We got people coming to us. We got people asking questions of us. We got people asking counsel of us when sometimes we're hurting them because they need to be trusting God in us not taking that dependence that should be upon God. Where are you at today? Anywhere you are, ministry can happen if you would open your heart and open your eyes. If Joseph was like most of us, he would have curled up in a ball in that jail cell and rotted. That, 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 that would have been his attitude if it was most of us. He would have never been used. He would have never had any more influence. And he would, he would, have, never, he would have never gotten out. Take an inventory of your day as you listen. If your thoughts and energy are more concern, consumed with you than others, you will be in a prison of your own doing, one that's far worse than where Joseph was. 
When we are saved, God puts within us a need to be poured out for others, just like he was on this earth. But when we don't, we stagnate. Pouring out ourselves into the lives of others who need the Lord, boy, it puts a freshness in us. It puts a liveliness in us that nothing nothing else can. And I want to encourage you to minister to other people. Open your eyes. Open your hearts. Again, that doesn't mean you have to feed the world. That doesn't mean you have to clothe the world. That doesn't mean you have to counsel the world. But you can point people to God. Joseph was planted in a prison, and he bloomed in that prison. Ministry can happen this week in your classroom, teacher and student. Ministry can happen at your doctor's office. Ministry can happen on the ball field or on the court. Ministry can happen in the office space. Ministry can happen on the oil field. Hey, and could I add for 2020 and 2021, ministry can happen online. You don't need a pulpit for what God has commanded all of us to do. And I want to encourage you as we go throughout this week, let, 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 let's forget about Sunday. Let's forget about the Lord's Day for a moment. And let's focus on Monday through Saturday. And I promise you, I promise you that if we minister to people Monday through Saturday, it will turn out on a Sunday. It will make a difference on the Lord's Day. And that's all the time that we have for today. I pray that this podcast was a blessing to you. As you've been listening to Sounding Out the Word podcast, a ministry of Anchor Baptist Church. I pray that God will bless as you lean upon his word, as we trust him, and as we reach out and as we minister to those that God allows to bring across our path. If you're listening locally today, anywhere within the valley, we encourage you to be a a guest at one of our next services. You can find our service times and our location on our website at www.anchorbaptistslc.com. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful day.